And welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Animaniacast. And welcome, everybody, once again to the Animaniacast. This is the only podcast out there that's dedicated to the animated television series, Animaniacs as well as other television shows in the Rugerverse, such as Freakazoid, Tiny Toon Adventures, and Peaky in the Brain. But today, we're talking about, oh, I don't know, a little trailer that happened to drop. Uh, what? Yes, we are recording this on the day that the Animaniacs trailer finally uh, was put out, long, put out to the world. <laughs> October 21st, 2020, just a little under a month, I suppose. Well, I think, right? Until the tw- the 20th. It's hard, hard to tell with math when there's 31 days in October, but <laughs> more or less a month before the uh, the release of Animaniacs on Hulu, and it looks like all 13 episodes are getting dropped all at once. Very exciting. Well, let's get to introductions. I am Joey, <laughs> and joining me once again is my brother, Nathan. Phone party! <laughs> and across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. Hello. Hello. Yes, it's... Well, it's. I'm a little discombobulated. It's been a very long day. Uh, the, this trailer actually was pretty funny. It actually accidentally dropped by... Hulu accidentally released it about um, 12 hours earlier than they, I think they mm-hmm. wanted to originally. Uh, it was just about to, you know, just happened to log into Facebook and saw a saw this trailer and I was like, what, what? And I, then I realized I couldn't share it. And then I realized, Oh, I better, I better record this thing on my phone right now. So I sent it to Nathan and Kelly. Uh, we were, we were some of the folks that saw it first firsties. Yeah. But, uh, (laughs) but we didn't share it online. I was, I had to be respectful. Oh man. My screenshot button was ready to go and show people stuff, but man, yeah, we could have been like number one on Twitter. We could have been look, huge. look, 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 but yeah, no. exclusive. So you're welcome, Hulu. You're welcome. <laughs> we did know that it was coming this week too. Which exactly. Nice. Yeah, I knew Word that it was. Yeah, we were told that it was going to be coming out Wednesday, and I didn't. I knew it was coming out this week. I didn't want to say it was coming out Wednesday because then, of course, as soon as I say it's coming out wednesday then something beyond our control happens and then it just doesn't come out on wednesday and everyone goes you're a liar so <laughs> I, well, we were told yeah we can only do what i'm told so anyway uh t- the trailer did drop today and uh well what are your general thoughts about it uh let's start with uh let's start with you nathan um i thought it was very fast paced lots of jokes and uh very colorful i guess <laughs> okay kelly and what about you <laughs> It was very hyper, and it seemed anticlimactic after the Jurassic Park clip with Spielberg that we saw at New York Comic Con. Yeah, where was the Spielberg? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Missed opportunity. Yeah, there should have been at least a few (laughs) subliminal uh, Stephen appearances or something like that. His name was there, so there's that. Yeah. It was... uh, was, it was interesting. I mean, it didn't. I, I kind of agree with you, Kelly. It was I was ex- my expectations on what I would would like to see were a little bit different than what we did see. Uh, but let's before we get into too much detail, I think we should go ahead and actually watch the trailer again real quick. Um, oh, so this will be my first time watching. So what? I'm very excited. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, watch the Animaniacs trailer. Hello. Reboots are symptomatic of a fundamental lack of originality in Hollywood. Have you no shame? Here's your check for the Animaniacs reboot, you sellouts. It's time for Animaniacs. You should see our new contracts. All right, guys, there's a lot of pressure on our first lines. Wait, don't. Make sure it's good first. Maybe something reminiscent of the first season? (laughs) 22 years later, and I'm still a knockout. I've tried online dating, but I keep getting catfished. 
How do I know she's even real? This tablet contains the sum of all human knowledge. All human knowledge in one easy-to-swallow tablet? <laughs> Quantum mechanics, quinoa wraps, Queen Bay. We've missed so much. Oh, sounds like an odyssey. My sandwich! Just where I left it. Yakko, turn on the black light. Nothing unusual there. Gee, Brian, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> I'm the Pegasus. <laughs> I come bearing horrible tidings of war from the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less talky, more flappy. <laughs> We're animated. Totally insane. Never mansplaining. Animated. Now, the adoration pours in. Okay, so there we go. That's the that's the trailer right there. So, a um, lot of things right there to to go over. Uh, it, it, it's you know the, it was definitely the the for, the first thing I thought of actually after watching that was just like you said it was very hyper, very fast paced, and I kept thinking of what Spielberg said: more shadows, more shadows. <laughs> Darker lines, darker lines. Because <laughs> there, 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 it's so just um, one color. You know what I mean? Like it seemed like they're. I mean, obviously, there's that one scene when they're walking into what appears to be, I think the the water tower, but uh, or not the water tower, the, the Warner lot. That's very dark and cloudy, probably for a mood. And yeah, the but, backgrounds are flat. Yeah, that's a, that's a word that I came, that came to mind as well when I watched it. it. Was like it just seems more flat than everything that I'm used to. You know, uh, the backgrounds and everything just seemed there's there's it doesn't seem as bad as the, there's this Animaniacs. Um, oh gosh, what was that Animaniacs something pack? Uh, it was a computer game back in the '90s or early 2000s, I believe. It wasn't. It's not Variety Pack. It's on the tip of my tongue, but it it. It kind of reminded me of that just a little bit. Just, I mean, it wasn't as, it wasn't nowhere near as as bad as it, but the, <laughs> just something something about it just reminded me of it. Just the flatness of it, perhaps. Um, let's go ahead and watch a uh, the shorter clip. This is the sh- the same trailer, but just a little shorter. Yeah, some scenes that weren't in the other one, so yeah. it's kind of fun. Okay, here we go. Hello. Reboots lack originality in Hollywood. Here's your check for the Animaniacs reboot, you sellouts. It's time for Animaniacs. All right, guys, there's a lot of pressure on our first lines. 22 years later, and I'm still a knockout. Yay! This tablet contains the sum of all human knowledge. In one easy-to-swallow tablet? Don't mind if I do. This is so intense! Turn on the black light. Gee, Brian, what do you want to do tonight? Try to take over... We found party! We're anime, totally insane. There we go. So we got to see them jumping down from the tower, mm-hmm. sliding down from the tower. We got to see, uh, just like in the, the first clip, we saw the new CEO. Um, and we saw this that muscly guy at the Olympics. And uh, he's kind of obsessed with medals, is what we believe. 
this character is. He's kind of like the foe that the Animaniacs have to go up against to teach a lesson, I suppose, in, in that part. Um, I, I thought it was funny that <laughs> there were a lot of people, when they saw him on that teaser poster that was never released officially, and at this point I don't think is going to be released officially with, the, with that guy posing on the tower. There were a lot of people that thought, oh, isn't that nice? They're gender swapping it. And instead of Hello Nurse, they're going to have this muscly guy. And I thought, no, <laughs> he's just a Hans and Franz-ish kind of Hello Lona's kind of guy. And he's, he's at the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, 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 nothing more than that episode. So in the, in the second trailer, is Mr. Mime in it? He is for a split okay. second. I was like, he looks different, and I was just like, "Is that him?" And yeah, I, yeah. So we know that there's going to be a um, a segment that's similar to Good Idea, Bad Idea. Um, Tom Bodet is not the narrator in it. Maybe he's in that kind of thing. You know, it's not mime time. It's well, maybe mime time still in it. We just know that Good Idea, Bad Idea is not in it. Uh, but something like good idea, bad idea is in it. But Tom Bodet is not the narrator. So maybe Mr. Mime is in that new segment. Could be. Maybe. He's well, in something. He's in. He's, he's at least in the Olympics. <laughs> he's in the Olympics in a shot for some reason on top of the, a TV. <laughs> drum, he's a drummer. Yeah, doing, which is, of course, where you want to put all your drum players on, on top of a big giant TVs and stadiums. Yeah, sure, I'm we'll sure it'll make some, sense. Yeah, it'll make some yeah, sense. <laughs> that one, I think, was the hardest thing with watching these this trailer is that it was so fast paced and so discombobulated um, that I I don't know about you two, but I didn't really find myself laughing at all. Did you? Did either one of you laugh, uh, Kelly? The closest I got to laughing was when the guy was laughing was when Pinky liked the social media posts. That think. was cute. Yeah, the so, catfish. No, that not the catfish part. The not part the where he liked it. Yeah, where you know it said yeah, yeah. zero likes, and then it goes up to one, and then you realize yeah. Pinky done it. That was cute. Yes, uh, I. But uh, Nathan, did anything actually make you laugh? I mean, I, I probably smiled at, but like I'm also like yeah. watching it by myself, so I don't like laugh at a lot of things <laughs> when I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> laughing hysterically in a room like, by yourself, w- sitting at work, like I'm sitting at lunch watching it again, and I'm like laughing so loud everyone's <laughs> looking over the cubicles to see what's going on and yeah it was also nathan's last day at work it was very <laughs> awkward got fired because of an animaniacs trailer laughing too uh, loud <laughs> well let's go ahead and go over before we go over the trailer kind of uh not necessarily shot by shot but definitely at a slower pace uh let's go and go over something that was also released which was the press uh synopsis or synopses of the different episodes. Uh, it's There's only about a sentence for each episode, and each episode, you know, should be coming out on the 20th all together. And I don't know about you two, I, I don't know if I will actually put in any time to watch a lot, all of them, but I know I'm going to watch at least a few of them to try to get a sense of where the season is going. And we'll review the, you know, the episodes one by one, but... Um, I don't know. You two are free to You're do not whatever going you want. To binge it, in other words. Uh, I don't think so. That's a that's a lot of time. Thirteen episodes, yeah. twenty minutes each. How much does that? Let's come not to? forget the Mandalorian will be coming out every. I guess every Friday. Every um, Friday, that's true. That's too. So I mean, priorities. This baby Yoda. Baby Yoda does have priorities. That is very <laughs> true. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and go over the synopses here of. The season. So it says season one, episode 101. The Warners and Warner sister return. Brame's meme fails to achieve world domination. Oh, spoiler. Well, there you go. So that's the. Ruined it. It just ruined the episode. <laughs> uh, episode two The Warners vacation in ancient Greece. Picking the brain, try using a dragon to rule the world. The dragon, the dragon, the dragon. <laughs> Oh, it'd be so great if it was like literally the same robot that they just said, well, let's just use that again. Uh, The Warners compete in Game of Skill. Uh, Brain gets busted time traveling. And Dot gives a dramatic math lesson. Ooh. I like math. That that, sounds exciting. I'm excited to learn about math. Episode three. 
Yeah, episode three sounds like it might be a fun one. Okay, episode four, the wa- the Warners fight a rabbit infestation, and Robot Brain's robot quote unquote son turns on him, and a new app is born. There we go. So that, that I don't know. That's I'm intrigued. A son of son of brain. <laughs> okay, the Warners are stalked by a hunter in episode five. Uh, so Elmer Fuddish kind of thing going on. Okay. Or what he, about the Huntsman? Oh, well, he, he's too busy drinking berry water. I was drink, busy drinking berry water. Well, I don't know when we're going to release that, that episode, by the way. We, maybe next time. <laughs> we'll have that Freakazoid <laughs> episode. Uh, the warders are stalked by a hunter. Pinky and the brain break into the NSA. And Ralph falls asleep. So confirmation... Just in case you didn't know, Ralph is back. Frank Welker, of course, is doing his voice. Episode 6, Dot discovers a recipe for cuteness. Aliens don't share brain's goals. And then odd political ads. I wish this was coming out before November 3rd. (laughs) I'd be so tired of of political ads. But I'm sure this will be. Well, fun. by then it will be like two weeks without one, so you'll be like, "Oh, oh miss some." Uh, oh, it'll be like, "Oh, miss some political ads." <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Warners investigate in episode seven. The Warners investigate a dog napping and accidentally start the French Revolution. Yakko channels Shakespeare to save hip hop. There you go. That's some fun stuff. I like whenever I see kind of history stuff. I'm cool with it. Uh, now, episode eight, the Warners hunt a donut thief, and then Brain creates a perfect, perfect flotus, or first lady of the United States. Hmm. Again, if this is Trump stuff, then I'm like, you may be going a little too late for it. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's just these, you know, cartoon universes where it's just, you know, President generic president <laughs> and then you can do whatever with it <laughs> uh and finally it says starbucks fails to escape cindy's adoring grasp that's got to be a new character right there starbucks i don't know i, I don't know so, no, <laughs> that's no slappy squirrel <laughs> At- cindy yeah what was that that's oh who's oh yeah and cindy as well yeah. like yeah I, yeah, the name Starbucks just stood out so much that I just <laughs> totally overlooked who Cindy was. You know, Cindy and Buttons. Yeah. Cindy and Muttons. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the, then episode nine. So episode eight, we're definitely getting some new character stuff uh, featured. Episode nine, the Warners butt heads with a conductor and talk and a talk show host. Brain is humbled by his future self and Marsha has a gnome in her mouth. If the conductor doesn't look like John Williams, then they missed an opportunity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. What, I, first conductor that came to my mind was train conductor, but I guess a conductor like a. When I think of conductor, I think yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to find out which one it is. What Why? also comes to mind is looking at this Marsha, and then the other one is Cindy. It's like, is it the Brady Bunch? What are they? Did they watch the Brady Bunch for like figuring out who's going to be? <laughs> Characters on this new Animaniacs. Oh, well. Um, Episode 10. The Warners discover an unauthorized version of their show in Russia. Brain battles a toddler for a meteorite. Also, a press conference. Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Episode 11. Again, we're this is no, uh, you know, old thing to Animaniacs is we're getting a Halloween episode much later after Halloween. It says, Halloween in Burbank. The Warners haunt a television and encounter a scary clown. That sounds familiar. I really hope it's Mr. Clown, but I kind of doubt it is. <laughs> but, well, that, but it also sounds like Poltergeist. Oh. Well, that sounds like then definitely much more what it is going after. Uh, with, you know, Spielberg being involved in all. And I still need to watch Poltergeist. You never I got it. I still have not seen it, but I will hopefully before Halloween happens this year. It's so good. I watched it when I was probably way too young to be watching. (laughs) 
Uh, also, Brain frightens a whole village into submission, and spooky monsters get claustrophobic. All right. Spooky. Spooky. Uh, the spooky episode. Clown. <laughs> uh, episode 12 The Inner Life of a Pimple. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. Pinky and the Brain entertain a sultana. Uh, like a female sultan, I suppose? Yeah. I don't, probably. Okay. Uh, a man lacks a sense of personal space. No mention of the Warners in that one. Which, that will be interesting to see if they I actually are in They're fact, in not every in episode. That's what they but, said, but they didn't. But that means they may not have a segment, but, you know. Maybe maybe it's one of these ones kind of like where it was the, the gloves, you know, where you kind of show the Warners at the beginning, but then you go yeah. into Wacko's pimple on his nose or something, and then mm-hmm. you just deal with that the entire time. Maybe. So they're in I'm, the episode. They're going to be not in the episode, really in but they, yeah, it doesn't sound like there's an episode about them. Yeah. Unless they're one of them is the man. Or mm. maybe it's like some, a man is lacking personal space to them, like uh, Pip or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, episode 13 the Warners go on a quest for Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Uh, Brain builds a driverless car. And then Dot sings all about all the first ladies. So we don't get a president song, but we do get a first lady song. Cool. Something which, new to summarize. That's yes, and that's got to be Randy Rogel right there. I mean, the, the whenever I saw the things like Shakespeare and uh, you know, obviously first ladies and and uh, what was the other history thing that they went over here? Uh, it was uh, it was Shakespeare with hip hop. I'm like, okay, maybe maybe Randy Rogel, maybe not. Uh, and then maybe some stuff with the French Revolution, I think, could lend itself to some music. We all know that music is playing a, an important part of the show. Uh, and that could actually, lend itself to music quite so much as guillotines. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, you know, hey, uh, we've had some good... Hey, Les Miser Animals was perhaps the, the, I, the perfect French musical ever on Animaniacs. But that's not about the French Revolution. Yes, so that's true. Get that confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go ahead. One of the concerns that we had um, definitely after the New York Comic Con was, and, and even after this trailer itself, is that it the show seems to be relying on uh, social media references and stuff like that. That let's face it, it'll be outdated within five to ten years easily <laughs> um i mean think about how trendy facebook used to be and now every kid goes Ugh, facebook oh that's MySpace. for old people that was oh myspace like yeah years ago i can't remember what MySpace was it even i don't even remember now <laughs> i kind of oh, miss maybe. myspace i miss the top eight you know people I miss to, the glitter graphics yeah all the all the animated gifs in your background and stuff i used to have yakko wacko and dot doing that little i still see the gif every now and then but it's them doing kind of a, a dance with a top hat, or it's some some fan art that somebody made, and I had that that you know animation going on in my background <laughs> of my MySpace page. But that was back in a day of social media when people had the biggest fight you ever had was why aren't I, why am I not in your top eight, mm-hmm. you know? And that was it, not <laughs> anything else. It's gotten so much worse. Well, at any rate, we were worried about it not being very timeless, and we did hear from one of our sources on the reboot, uh, did tell us that, indeed, uh, more than 80%, they said, of the content is timeless. And they also said that there's lots of historical sketches and songs from the Cold War to ancient Rome to King John of England and the Magna Carta to Christopher Columbus, which made me kind of brighten up and go, ooh, are you really going to laid into Christopher Columbus and they said, Oh yeah, don't worry, the Animaniacs we <laughs> we really get into how much of a jerk he was and we didn't use those exact words, obviously. <laughs> it <laughs> we makes were... me wonder if it, this was supposed to have come out earlier, you know, to line up with the election and Halloween and I, yeah, I'm sure. I, I I mean we were again we, remember we were told like uh, I think originally like fall, weren't they thinking it's Yeah, they were thinking they were thinking fall twenty twenty and then they said fall, summer. But, we know. also heard summer of twenty twenty yeah. at one point. So they, I mean, I do hear that they're kind of scrambling right now to get some of the audio mixes done in time for this. um, Like some of the episodes are still not quite done in the audio mix part. So they're kind of frantically getting it done for November 20th. But um, 
At any rate, uh, they say the source also says that uh, being true to the original is the show's goal. And although the first episode has to deal with catching us up to the present, there are bits here and there of modern things. There is still an overwhelming focus on history, education, being informative, and showing times and places we don't tend to see in other shows. And uh, that they hope that calms our nerves. (laughs) All right. So a lot of things to to go over. I think uh, the first thing we should do is kind of just rewatch that initial trailer, but we'll kind of slow it down a bit. And uh, yeah, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. let's go ahead and share this one with you one more time, and hopefully it works. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to mute this to make sure that it doesn't get any sound off of it. Oh, cool. We can make our own sounds. So the the way this starts, I thought was funny. You know, the whole talking about how there's no creativity in shows doing reboots. But that doesn't necessarily excuse a show. (laughs) Yeah. um, (laughs) Like, it's funny that they pointed out and everything, but I'm like, it doesn't mean that it's like, okay. It doesn't like give you a pass to do it necessarily, but I mean, it's okay. We admit it. (laughs) Um, yeah, I get what you're saying. At one point I'm like, Oh, that's kind of funny. And, and, uh, but yeah, does it excuse behavior like that? I don't know. Um, Yeah. Does it, it doesn't mean that it's not creative and that it's not stifling, you know, I, I do wish there was new things that were made that were, you know, but, uh, you know, people don't want to spend the money to uh, invest in new things when they can do a sure prior, like thing like Animaniacs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing I also noticed here is from this this uh, beginning of the trailer was the date of one fifteen nineteen, and I'm like, wait, that was like a whole year after they announced the show, so maybe that's why they had so much trouble. Like with we heard so much trouble behind the scenes. It's that the Warners would not accept anything until about a year a year into production. Because <laughs> that check is just off. At any rate, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nate Ruger, by the way, uh, of course, has been on on Twitter, and we'll have a little special message from uh, Nate Ruger a little later. But he did just as much say basically what you did, our other Nathan, oh. uh, hey. about how it's uh, yeah. Them saying this doesn't make it okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, funny. I think it's funny. So yeah. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a it's, it's depends on your per, your um how you're how you're looking at it, right? Your perspective. Yeah. Of whether it's funny or just sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um so we start off here the Warners instead of being locked in the water tower are rising from the grave. Do you think this is part of the opening song? Like I feel like part of me thinks that this might be the Animaniacs theme song. I do, I do. I think this okay. is this is how each episode will will open. Or at least I think one episode. Yeah, like yeah, they might have a special in, the intro just for do, the first episode. Yeah, and they could do different visuals for different episodes. In theory, you know, who knows? Yeah, um, but I think you know that makes sense and because they, right here they talk about you should see our new contracts. Yeah, um, which okay, that's. That's uh, so. What line would that be replacing? Uh, uh, Baloney's by the sl- you know Baloney in our slacks. One of those. Uh, just, uh, probably Clinton uh, plays the sax. Is probably no, no. I don't think so because it's not the same tune. At any rate, it'll be oh, interesting. Well, the tune is all changed up. Oh, uh, and they, they're all the same age, I guess. I mean, <laughs> according to the tombstones, that's true. I'm t- well. Quite frankly, I'm tired of everybody saying, well. <laughs> Yakko is this old exactly like give him the age and Wacko is yeah. this and yet Dot is there, this it's and I'm like so hard to it's like it doesn't really matter because like it doesn't like it like of course in the original song of uh, the Hello Nurse song Wacko says that he's seven he's yeah man I sent from heaven too bad I'm only seven I think that's how the word the song basically goes but he's not seven and so it's like just give it a rest it doesn't matter how old they are. Right, they're, like they were created in 1930 or 1929, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah, they're incredibly old. So they're um, and the, yeah, like Animaniacs, they don't even 
they're not consistent even it just depends on what the story you need to write yeah you know, like if, it, if a tune is going to get older or like slappy or if they're going to remain young forever <laughs> it just depends on the story that you need to tell with they're them. born at an age i think and then just stay yeah that forever well at any rate here's yakko wacko dot again very kind of blurry and i think this looks almost like it could be on the warner lot i'm not quite sure hmm. but it could be uh let's move on but talking about their first line so yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's i think that's a definitely. parking i think that's a parking uh garage right there i think that's the i think this is the lot okay so she smashes them uh here's the new acme labs looks different some people really like the design i'm i think it's okay yeah, it reminds me of like Mystery Science Theater 3000 when they do different seasons, and I'm like, oh, it looks different. That's a good point. I And I like, always kind of look forward to that um, yeah. with Mystery Science Theater. It's like, oh, the, the tunnel's different. Yeah. So. And, and the and the, the satellite, satellite of Love always looked a little bit different, which I liked. So mm-hmm. um, one thing I'll say about, with going slow on this is Pinky's new design, depending on what what frame he's on, he just looks so weird sometimes. <laughs> the brain the brain looks pretty, you know, like Well looks, he doesn't do a lot of expressions. The brain. He doesn't. I really you know but the angular lines on him right here mm. uh, like just depending on the angle he's in, they really kind of uh stand out. Uh here's this catfish joke. It, I yeah. It didn't yes. make me laugh, but it, was, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's not the best joke. I I don't think it's not the worst joke Yay. though. So, yeah, Yay, yeah. Steven Spielberg is yes. producer. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have <laughs> yeah, the best thing said his name, uh, Wicca Maniacs. Uh, boy, oh boy. I don't know if you want to go to the Animaniacs wiki necessarily for accurate information. Sometimes it gets a little off. <laughs> but uh, she here's the new CEO of Warner Brothers. Uh, I thought this kind of thing of a easy-to-swallow tablet was... I, I, honestly, I thought this was the part that probably made me smile the most in the whole trailer of all the things we missed. Um, again, I didn't necessarily laugh, but... I. I'm, I'm not saying I won't laugh when it actually premieres. Yeah, it's shown in I mean, full context. Like, it's like old humor. It felt it felt like the old humor. Yeah, and uh, the problem with trailers, it's, it's you don't get the context of the situation, so it's like I didn't laugh at that, but like when I see it, I'll probably laugh. Oh, yeah. yeah. So November twentieth, uh, where this this is, I, <laughs> I I don't quite like how Yakko looks all the way, but I like where they're going with this episode where they're the guys. I like this, I like this scene right here because it made me think llama 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 llama. Right? Yeah, it do, yes. they're in the clouds, and they're it, putting their hands the together <laughs> across the legs. <laughs> I'm from the puppy children. <laughs> But they're on Mount Olympus. You can see the tower on Mount Olympus right there, which was cool to see. Uh, okay, so we're we're getting a reference here to... Uh, back in that? the tower, I yeah, guess. Yeah, back in the water tower with a Catherine Zeta-Jones going through <laughs> lasers joke, sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was that? Entrap- I heard the name of the movie. Oh, yeah. Entrap- Entrapment. <laughs> yes. So there we go. Kids, you see, you know, it's not all uh, humor that's... <laughs> referenced uh just stuff that just happened yesterday some of it happened back in the late 90s in trap but, but the sandwich is gross yeah but yeah but wacko doesn't care uh <laughs> now this part was kind of weird the the whole they're in the tower and turn on the black light to as like a crime scene investigation at this point i have no i have zero idea what what episodes these are from by the way just reading off the text <laughs> i know our goal was let's read the synopses and then let's figure out where they're from and i have no idea I i'm mean, just gonna guess are, the first episode still and just yeah because they're the, like getting into the place the when, water tower this yeah. is like they're coming back to the water towers uh so we have the why we do it today try to talk about the world this is probably where it li- almost looks so f- flat compared to what i'm used to you know um just the background itself just the a few, yeah just a few blues and it just looks i don't know not a fan um and they're getting blasted with stuff for some reason uh mm-hmm. phone party 
yep. uh, a quick shots of stuff that uh, I I this this whole Pegasus thing of I got a warning for you and her shutting him up. I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, obviously, in the Olympics episode, yeah, of doing a high jump, cheating. I'm assuming doing a high jump, and then we have something that a lot of people are really freaked out about, kind of a Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z anime uh, animation, yeah, something going on, which. Um. Yeah, it's cool to see them in different stuff. I suppose that's what <laughs> Which, they meant when they were talking uh, at New York Comic Con about yeah, doing them that in makes sense. Styles. Yeah, and they also talked about K-pop and and stuff like that going on. I think right. Mm-hmm. I guess this, I think so. this with dot with her thick lines and her a new dot yeah new dot animation a dot animation yeah. <laughs> what it's so cute. She's so cute. Yeah, it's almost like she got uh, took some Powerpuff Girl pills or something. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's some Trump stuff going on. This was also big on Twitter. People were... Yep. When the animaniacs get so political, I mean, forever ago? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, they never... They, like yeah. Song they were never an incredibly political show, but they also didn't stray away from it. Yeah, uh, like so. the... They would not not do a, a cyclops of a political character. No, you know they totally would do it. They they had like one of the first episodes. Like they bring all the world leaders in uh, with a Pinky the Brain um, trying to take over the world. But that one, one, and they make yeah, and they make fun of numerous world leaders. Uh, I'm guessing that that person yelling at the cyclops is the bad guy in the uh, or bad girl <laughs> in the the episode uh, trying to tell the Trump Cyclops to do something. Um, I also think that might be the same one that gets electrocuted right here by Yakko Zeus, which is weird because it, it was already, this is, looks like the second time getting electrocuted because it starts the scene with down and then gets shocked up. So there we go. Yakakus, Wakakus, and Dotticus. There we go. Not Zeus, Zeusicus. <laughs> <laughs> They will have their vengeance in this life or the next. Yes. Uh, right? Did I get that right? Or my, I will have my revenge. I don't know. Can't remember what he said. Gladiator <laughs> reference for y'all that don't, don't Oh, see, I was like, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's, here's something that I'm just noticing for the first time. Wacko's tongue is apparently behind his teeth, which is okay. Uh, when he gets blown back again, probably some stuff here from the, uh, the Olympics episode brain is back with his suit. It looks like they might be in a United nations building with, uh, some art right there being done. That's been vandalized. I thought, I thought it was, uh, him creating the first lady or something. Maybe that's probably it. I just, I just just saw that flag on the side and I assumed it might be United nations. But now that I think about it again, Nathan, you're probably absolutely correct. That's gotta be the, (laughs) that's gotta be the Flotus episode. All uh, right. Now here has here's a weird one. So this is again in the theme song, and there's a ton of characters behind them, and even some characters in front that were from Hanna Barbera. Um, okay, so we have Yogi Boo Boo, and I forget that little. Uh, I forget his name is Yaki or something. He's a he's a little yellow duck from. Hanna Barbera, and of course we have the Chicken Hawk from Warner Brothers cartoons, and then Huckleberry Hound. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's a joke that sets them up being in this <laughs> this theme song, um, but it was that was perhaps the biggest surprise I had from this trailer. Is why the heck? And I'm and I've asked some of our sources why. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, is are going they going to be here? in the show? Like, yeah, what's what's going on here? Um, and then looking in the background, there's so many characters in the background. There's that almost Grim Reaper looking character in the background, but I looked a little closer and I think it actually just might be a zombie of some sort um, yeah. because there's no bones really. But then there's, you know, this Tyrannosaurus Rex with big arms and a guy with no shirt. There's there's all these little side characters that my first instinct says that they are uh characters that the warners just run into but what was that one that we talked about star something or rather star star is that girl with the horn i mean 
I, is that a star box? Oh, there's no boxiness about her, though. I <laughs> that don't might be really, Cindy, though. That might be Cindy. <laughs> I, it might be Marsha. I'm guessing some of these people will be in the show, and maybe not all of them in first season. That's so, very true as well. So. That little, there's a little flying boy that looks like uh, Louis Anderson in Life with Life with Louis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> so I'm glad to see Louis Anderson's working on the show. Uh, let's see, but yeah, lots of lots of stuff going on. I'm not a huge fan of some of these character designs, but again, we'll have to see them in action to see uh, whether or not they're they're you know funny. Yeah. But no slappy squirrel. Uh, this this part was nice. This part was nicely animated. I, I like the background. I like the colors. And this is, for the most part, the uh, shot that I think Hulu and Warner Brothers is showing the most because it looks so nice. Yeah, it's very pretty. Um, the no man splainy. Uh, That's funny part. Uh, Animaniacs, and then the <laughs> like is only from Pinky. Okay, yeah. Uh, so there we go. That was our the first trailer. Uh, you know, we won't really go through the second one because, well, should we go through the second one shot by shot a little bit? I don't think uh, so. I mean, were there, like we talked about the scenes that were different, which yeah. is them jumping down the water a tower. Couple, and a couple, get, a shot of Pinky saying yay and uh, the muscle guy throwing. The and we guy. see Mr. Mime. So if yeah. you want to see what Mr. Mime looks like in the new show. but <laughs> Yeah, but not much really in that uh, in that second one. Well, uh, there's a lot to say about it. Uh, what are any, any other thoughts right now on this trailer that you, that we've gone through it kind of a little slower? Kelly, what do you think? I, I'm intrigued. I mean, I, some of it looks promising. It, it's just so hard to tell from a trailer. I, I mean, it is different visually for sure. Um, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see what it's like with the show. Okay. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Yeah, I'm not going to watch the show. I'm, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I, I, um, I'm excited more than I was a year ago, I guess, to see it. Um, I don't like watching trailers typically because I feel like it ruins the show. <laughs> Because, like, especially in, like, comedies, like, Animaniacs, like, I'm like, oh, great, I know what the joke's going to be, you know. So, but, but, but without the context on these, I don't think, I think you're probably Yeah, okay. I, I, I think they showed just little enough that it hopefully won't mess anything up. <laughs> like, seeing, like, the Simpsons trailer, like, for the movie, like, I remember seeing those and then watching the movie, and I was like, I think I would have laughed at this had I not seen the trailer. For Spider Pig and all that, right? Oh yeah, Spider Pig. Yeah, I remember that. I thought that was uh, like really they funny in the movie, but they played it so much in the trailer that it yeah. was not funny in the movie. So by the like, time that showed on the movie, I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah, some of the jokes that they showed right here, I didn't laugh at them now. Maybe I'll laugh at them in context, uh, or maybe I'll see them so much that even if they. Sh- I know they're funny. I still won't laugh at them because how many times can you laugh yeah. at something? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get some feedback. Um, Nathan Kelly, if you could, um, if uh, Nathan, if you want to check out the Facebook uh, feed and then uh, Kelly, if you want to check out some of the Twitter stuff. And while you guys are looking for some comments, you know, they're positive or negative or in between. We have a few uh, messages here from, uh, we have one uh, statement here from Nate Ruger who, of course, we've had on the show uh, a few couple years ago with him and his brothers and Tom, uh, which is a fantastic interview, and everybody should check that out because it really gives you a a taste of what it was like to work on the show as a little kid. Um, But he sent us a statement here because, uh, obviously, it's it's been a different experience for him uh, with all this. So let's go ahead and listen to his voicemail, and then we're going to have a... uh, a statement uh, that was sent to us from an animator who wanted to give their thoughts as well. So here is Nate. Hello, my name is Nate Ruger, and this is my statement on the upcoming reboot of Animaniacs. This isn't easy for me. Working on Animaniacs was and is one of the greatest episodes of my life. To give you a sense of how important this show is to me, I want to share with you one of my favorite memories. As a little kid, I got invited to the Emmys. And this wasn't the Emmys you see on TV, this was all the uh, untelevised awards. 
but I was still just a kid walking into a gala awards dinner at a big Hollywood hotel surrounded by TV's best and brightest in fancy suits and dresses. I felt uh, completely out of my depths, but I didn't feel alone. Not only did I have my dad with me, but I also had my dad's fellow nominated co-workers too. When the ceremony finally started and we were seated, I remember hearing one of us, a Paul Rugg I think, say, well we're not going to win anything tonight, because they were seating us at a table as far away from the stage as you could get. And the ceremony was long too, going on hours longer than what you'd see on TV. So it seemed like we were in for a long, sad, boring slog of a night. But I was surrounded by one of some of the finest writers in kids TV, and I was their target audience. So they got to try out all of their best material on me, and I passed the hours laughing at their jokes, enjoying good food and dessert, and my first coffee. They went out of their way to make this little kid, at one of their life's most important moments, feel like one of them. And then we won. And I got to go to the stage with my dad and hold an official certificate from the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, naming me and thanking me for my contribution to the outstanding excellence of Animaniacs. I will forever cherish that night, because this is what show business can be. The entertainment industry can be kind, can be fun, can be inclusive, can be respectful, and can be, well, good. For the past two years, seeing my father's show getting remade without involving him or his fellow writers at all, my faith in what this business can be is shaken. Now I want to make this clear. I have nothing against the new episode's writers, artists, cast, or crew. I deeply respect and admire all the hard work and talent that they are pouring into bringing the Animaniacs to a new generation of viewers. And it brings a smile to my face to hear the original cast reprising their iconic roles. Lastly, I cannot speak on behalf of my father or the original writers of Animaniacs. I can only speak for myself. And this is what I have to say. <sighs> Tom Ruger and the original writers of Animaniacs are, in my experience, what made Animaniacs the Emmy-winning, Peabody-winning, critical and commercial success that has been so popular with its devoted fan base for the past 27 years. While the reboot yes, has the legal right to do whatever they want with the characters of Animaniacs. I cannot and will not condone the business practice of rebooting Animaniacs without even giving a courtesy call to the original creator or making any good faith efforts whatsoever to involve any of the original writing staff in these new episodes. I wish these new episodes nothing but success, but I will not be silent about how this new series did not give the original writers a voice in the future episodes of their show. To the fans excited for these new episodes, I certainly can't and won't stop you from watching, especially when we all need some light in this very dark year. But I beg of you, all of you, please know that the show you are about to watch on November 20, 2020, was made by the hard work and talent of this new cast and crew, but it was also made from the slow and crushing heartbreak of my father and all the original writers who were never given the chance to make new episodes of the Animaniacs. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, yeah, so I thought some very impassioned, uh, really just a beautiful statement from Nate right there. Um, it, it it is. I mean, we've we've talked about how we how our disappointment of uh, Tom not being involved uh, from the very beginning, uh, and you know, it's it's tough. So you know, it's yeah, because you want to like the show, but it's also like I want Tom to like it, and I want Tom to be involved, and I want <laughs> yeah, exactly, and and, and to know I just that want it's... everyone to be happy and <laughs> right. And I do know that 
I, I have to say that I, I, I have heard that Will Leslie, I've been told that Will Leslie, <laughs> well, I, I Wellesley, gotta, Wellesley, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've, been I've been told, told his that, name is Will Leslie. Well, I've been told his name is Will Leslie. And then Nathan <laughs> tells me it's Wellesley. I've been told different things. I've been told by some, by some folks who've worked on the show that Wellesley has, uh, an extreme, uh, admiration and respect for tom i've also been told that well wellesley has not had that it kind of depends on the person that you're talking to and you kind of have to take their words at a grain of salt and we really at the end of the day we have to look at the final product and see does it fully respect the original or not and it just is sad that and i don't think it'll ever not be sad that again as even if this the new show which is great which we all hope it is uh they are kind of missing an opportunity uh, with all the writers that are still with us Mm -hmm. (laughs) who just 20 years ago, which I know for people who are younger than 20 or around 20, it seems like a ton, you know, so long ago. So long ago, yeah. But what I'm worried about with this Animaniacs is that it's not going to cross that bridge of age, uh, you know, attracting people to the show like it did in the original run. It's kind of funny because when we were kids, we were at the right age to watch this, you know, like we're kids and that's where we're kind of going for people our age, right? Yeah. But there was also a bunch of people in their 30s and 40s who are now in their 50s and 60s who saw the show on TV and said, this speaks to me as well. I don't know if this new show is going to necessarily have that, you know, age range like the original I don't think it's going to necessarily speak to me as much as it does to kids. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, you're definitely not going to be their target audience. No. Regardless. And, and we were, we wouldn't be in the 90s. We wouldn't have been their target audience. No. Like, that's, it's, like, it's like, I don't really get freaking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't grow up with it the way y'all did. Yeah. I just didn't yeah. watch it. Um, so it, it's, it's quirky and it's fun, but it's... I mean, well, not the next favorite. episode, when we ever get to another well, episode yeah, of Freakazoid. <laughs> no, no, the next one after that. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, you'll see. You're, you're, we're going to be getting to a good That'll episode. Be in three months, ep- though. We're, yeah, we're going to be getting to an episode of Freakazoid that is very Kelly-centric. Oh, is it a well, no, I'm not going to we'll say. See. Anything. That's going to be it's going to be next year, honestly, because it's going to yeah. be after the yeah, at the rate we're going at this point. At this yeah. point. yeah. So. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and talk about uh, something that right here we got from an animator, and then we'll get to some social media comments. Because again, we're going to get some of the the <laughs> the stuff that makes you feel like mm, before we get to the the stuff that is uh, a little lighter. I think but this is from an, an animator who wrote into us, and they said after watching this trailer, the one word that seems to float to the top of my thoughts is all caps ugly. <laughs> The art direction with its sharp points and flat colors might have been appealing if there was emphasis put on strong posing, great expressions, and clear staging. But the animation is muddy, simultaneously lacking tweens, which is an animation term like the in-betweens, I believe is what that is. I looked it up real quick on Google, (laughs) and it doesn't mean a tween like a person in their tweens. It means in-betweeners. Yes, something, yeah. It's lacking tweens in places. Which makes it, I guess, herky jerky, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's lacking tweens in places and over and over animated, never hitting its mark and missing the beat of the of the dialogue. You can see the difference starkly when the animation from the main title is copied directly from the original compared to anything that is quote unquote reboot only animation. The draftsmanship is shockingly low in many places. A lot of this looks like it is tweened by copy pasting, skewing vector lines instead of penciling the tweens as individual drawings and then inking them frame by frame. I also suspect in places the artists don't know how to properly squash and stretch characters in extreme poses. See Wacko, where Yakko smacked him with a mallet. Very amateurish. Which I gotta say, I did look at that and it did look a little weird when Wacko got smashed. It didn't look... Like, when you see... (laughs) 
How many things do you smash with mallets, Joey? Well, honestly, I, I've been and- watching. I was watching the. <laughs> I was watching the part where Wacko says goodbye, old screamer. Recently, and I kind of was going through that a uh, as a shot by shot kind of thing, and that just looks so good. <laughs> we even like shot like pause, 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 and this shot with the mallet, yeah, not as not as good. Uh, the design of on the rest of the characters has a, the has the Tumblr slash Spumco influence so prevalent in the industry in recent years. It comes down to personal taste, but I don't think it is appropriate for a classically influenced show like Animaniacs. I also hear a lot of stock cartoon sound effects, which makes me wonder if they will bother incorporating orchestral sounds, orchestral sounds, into the effects in the underscore, like they did in the original series. Like, for example, in the un- original, every eye blink was a xylophone or piano note that was scored compared to the stock eye blinks in the Jurassic Park parody. I didn't even think of that when I that, but that's very true. Like mm-hmm. it's one of the things I really liked in the original was when they tiptoe, they will go blink, 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 blink. A lot of or- orchestral uh, sound effects. Uh, the Warners, um, the, I'm sorry, but mostly what I found was most ugly was the tone. The Warners don't act like themselves. Lots of weird choices, like the Warners whacking each other with mallets. The jokes feel very first draft and generic overall. Also, although Animaniacs was known for having suggestive layered humor, that catfishing joke isn't clever or tongue-in-cheek. It's just an adult joke. Overall, I feel like this show was made by people who have been who have seen real cartoons, real cartoons, but don't have enough love to understand them. But mallet plus cartoon of sound effects does not equal good cartoon. It seems like lazy, meme-based humor without guidance of an experienced leadership dedicated to extending a classic tradition to a new generation. These jokes were written for any characters. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot just brought in the paycheck. Uh, trailer suggested as much anyways. So... That was their that was their thoughts. Uh, again, I, a lot of lot of things that I did not notice, and not being an artist myself, I would not be able to. I, I didn't even know I what the know. word tweens means. I still don't know what the word tweens means. So we we can't even verify if these things are real. Like I don't know. I I googled the word tweens, and it it was an animation term. This person yeah, did not from, make it up. From what I know from Disney Animation, like the main animator would would kind of get the highlights, the, the main beats of the movement. And then the in-betweeners would do the, the, the tiny small uh-huh. shifts in between the big movements. So that makes sense. You don't have one single person doing every single little, you know, motion, um, because it's a collaborative effort. There you go. So, well, but I don't know how that's done now. I mean, you know, so much is done digitally and with computers. Yeah, if it's so even done. Yeah. yeah, that's the old-fashioned way. So that's that's all I know is the old-fashioned way. <laughs> well, let's go and get to some uh, feedback from uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, what do we have, Nathan? Anything anything interesting on Facebook? Um, there's no comments on Facebook. What? So what? I thought I, we – no. What? Oh, wait. No, sorry. I didn't – I had to scroll down. Oh, there's like a bunch of – whoa. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff Kelly says, uh, it looks great. Just need to keep in mind is not the Animaniacs I'm so used to. Just need to move forward and enjoy and not be picky. And I think that's I think that's pretty. But I am picky and I like being picky. No, you just gotta move forward. Like let it be. I don't. It's... I don't like green beans. Um, <laughs> Zach says I am stoked for this. I am reliving my childhood by watching the original Animaniacs. I love you guys. You're awesome. Welcome back. So I don't know if he's talking to us or the Warners. I think he's talking to us. Totally. I think so. Yeah, uh, we love you we're too. Back. We're back. It's been we're a week. back. <laughs> <laughs> And another episode's out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, let's see. Um, This person has three concerns. This is Chris Blaine. Um, I mean, maybe tone the skin back a little. I don't know. Doesn't really matter, truthfully. The biggest concern, though, how many people will complain and somehow be offended by nautical nonsense? That's part worries me (laughs) because I love the show. Always can get a lap out. And lastly, my final concern, only 13 episodes. I hope it'll kick off and maybe make another season afterwards. Regardless, I'll be binging this when it releases. And we know there 
will be a second season and yeah even a third is a yeah talk, so. yeah totally i think they're they're in unofficial talks for a third and they even uh, showed it in that you know contract that they're signing that it's at least a two-season contract right there yeah uh, it's not like netflix and cancels every single show after you watch the first season that's true looking yeah. forward to this netflix season. what i'm learning for for netflix now is don't start watching a series until it gets at least two seasons and then maybe start watching i guess and yes. i learned that back in the early 90s <laughs> Usually they cancel at the third season, though. So that's literally why I I refused to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I I had already this was not long after Young Indiana Jones, and so I was still hurting. I was hurting bad, and I was like, I'm not getting emotionally invested in the show anymore. And so um, my brothers that you should watch it is totally up your alley. And so I waited until this. It was the summer before the second season started. They were replaying the first season. So I already knew there was going to be a second season. I was like, okay, I'll watch now because at least I've got two seasons going. And then, of course, it survived at like seven. And there then you go. the flip side is shows that go on way too long. Not Buffy, but, you know, like X-Files went on way too long. And yeah. What's yeah. going on way too long now? Oh, uh, Walking Dead. Oh yeah, God. a lot of people are saying Walking Dead, which I never got into. So I don't have a problem with that being on forever. Really? When Frank <laughs> well. Airbomb was working on it, you know, uh, Shawshank Redemption and young Indiana Jones uh oh it was so amazing <laughs> um but what what are people offended by nautical references I didn't get that. I don't get I that either, either. <laughs> well you All know the boats ah <laughs> I don't really get it either maybe maybe uh autocorrect changed it maybe for it him might have changed for something else but from not appropriate oh, that made it political political is probably for nautical <laughs> But I think it's so funny if we were offended by nautical nonsense. Yes. <laughs> like, they're on another boat. I am very Maybe. offended. Uh, Kelly, what do we have on Twitter of note? Oh, okay. Um, this one I thought was interesting. Uh, from Christina Two Electric Boobaloo. <laughs> I have zero problems with Animaniacs making Trump jokes. In fact, I would have been 100% surprised if they didn't. Unironically using the term mansplain was cringe as F. This is a children's show as well. Um, though, and you can't convince me otherwise. So now we've got <laughs> cursing involved, which is fun. <laughs> and then uh, from dusk till John wrote, I'd like to remind anyone upset about Animaniacs today of just one thing. And then they show the picture of please, please, please get a life foundation. <laughs> um Victor Field wrote, uh, Celebrities trending. Mel Brooks, 6,000 uh, plus odd tweets. Trending in the United Kingdom. Animaniacs, almost 13,000 tweets. It doesn't always suck on Twitter. Yes. This is true. And, and then this was this one was fun, too. Uh, Jeff. Jeff J. says, Yeah, this is going to be super ridiculous. All caps. Inject this into my veins. <laughs> Whoa, that that's some hardcoreness there. <laughs> well, we also had. Uh, I guess we'll stop with uh, one more uh, thing. This is we've got an email here from one of our listeners. It goes by Technotron, and Technotron says reboots can sometimes not work when you have a new team working on it. But from what I've seen so far from the Animaniacs reboot trailer, I think that the team working on the Animaniacs reboot could actually give us a good reboot. With everything else going on in the world right now, we could use a brand new Animaniacs right now, which I think at the end of the day, like Nate said, even in his comment, I know that this has been such a tough year <laughs> for everybody, <laughs> and we really need something like Animaniacs to help lift us up. And even though it may, it may not be exactly the thing that we're looking for completely for many different reasons, uh, we're still looking forward to hopefully having a good show that we can mm -hmm. enjoy and laugh. And that's really what we all really want is a, is a, is a good show. And to really, we're going to judge it, you know, just depending on what it oh, is. Oh, we will and, judge it. Oh, we will yeah. judge, uh, depending on what you know, what it is, not what it could be or should be or whatever, just what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our water tower rating. Well, what do you think? Out of five water towers, how many would you give this trailer? Nathan, what do you think? Um, well, based on all the trailers I've seen in my life, this <laughs> is a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why do you think that? 
<laughs> um, it was uh, two minutes, which is the perfect length for a trailer. And it showed me uh, 13 different scenes that I liked. And it showed me two scenes I didn't like. And no, <laughs> <laughs> just I just wanted to see you guys' faces. So I was like, saying, huh? You like, counted what them? Is, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, no, it was funny. Um, it wasn't hilarious, which makes me think maybe they left some of the really funny jokes for the TV show. So maybe there you go. Yeah, one can hope. Kelly, what about you? I'm also going to go to three. Um, you know, I. I'm one of those people that there have been trailers in my life that have made me cry and, you know, give me chills. You know, I'm thinking about Star Wars and things like that, Spielberg trailers. So this was not up there with that. Um, But it looked interesting. And, yeah, you're right. They probably saved the best jokes for the show, hopefully. Because, again, yeah, uh, yeah. So also it didn't make me laugh. But y'all know my sense of humor. I mean, it really needs to be put in context and... You know, I have a weird sense of humor. So <laughs> hopefully this will hit it, you know, some of the time at least. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really – I haven't seen enough to, to, to know for sure yet. All right. Well, I'm going to give it a little less. I'm going to give it a two and a half. Uh, it was nice seeing stuff, but, yeah, I – I, I wish I saw stuff, something that made me go, oh my God. Like, I didn't see anything. <laughs> like Jurassic that, Park. Yeah. yeah. That, made you, that made me say, like, I'm going to go talk, talk to my friends or show my wife or look at this. Look at this little part of this trailer. That is so funny. Nothing of like that really stood out for me. Jurassic it, it, Park made me cry and gave me mm-hmm. shit. That, that <laughs> clipped it. So, the, the, the I, footage. That's an indication, but, but y'all know why I love that. So, I, I don't, the whole show's not going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do the entire show. <laughs> yeah. Just Jurassic Park anime. You should watch that Jurassic Park uh, Lost World show on Netflix, by the way. It's, I watched the season. It's, well, I don't want to get emotionally involved because then they'll just cancel it. It's, hey, it's, you know, it, it, it holds itself like as like it doesn't need It holds season. itself as a one season show if it doesn't oh, get a re okay. So just so you know. I gotta, anyway. I got to finish Bly Manor first. Okay, okay. Oh, ugh. Well, if you want light uh, something for dessert, that uh, I, Jurassic I World show is I very light. I binged Bly Manor and uh, I was, I just. Is that uh, well, I, I'm excited to talk about how not good it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not, you guys can start your own Bly Manor podcast. Uh, let's go to get to some contact information. Nathan, where can people get in contact with you to talk about Bly Manor? Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you want to complain about Bly Manor, come find me on Twitter, JangoFT. That's me. And what about you, Kelly? You can also find me on Twitter, Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S, or email me, Kelly, at bigshineyourrobot.com. Okay, and as for the Animaniacast, we're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And, of course, you can also find us at animaniacast.com. That's where our RetroZap archives are. We are a proud member of the RetroZap podcast network, and you can join us in our Discord group. You can get a welcome link by going to discord.animaniacast.com. That will bring you over to... Uh, the Animaniacast slash RetroZap group where you can talk to other Animaniacs fans or really just talk about anything pop culture with any of the other RetroZap podcast hosts and writers. So check out RetroZap.com today and we'll see you over on the Discord. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. So for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respected trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated.